Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be making like a UI that we can kill other people with, or we can kill ourselves if we want. Pretty much the same thing. I'm not gonna be able to test it with anybody else because, well, I don't have anybody to test it with. But you can go ahead and test it out yourself with someone else if you like. So, yeah, let's get started with this. So, first thing we wanna do is actually make our UI. So in storage UI, let's hit the plus, put in screen UI. In the screen UI, hit the plus, and let's put in, let's say a frame. So I'm just gonna make a little box in the corner of the screen. Then I'm gonna hit the plus, and I'm gonna insert a text box. This text box is what we're gonna have for the player's username that we want to kill. So let's just name this text box PLR to kill. Then let's hit the plus and insert a text button. Then we can resize this button a bit. And then I'm just going to rename this button to kill. Because this is the button that's going to run the remote. So in the frame, we can just design it. I'm going to put a UI corner to make it round. Can make it a little bit more like a darker gray. I really need to stop using gray. Can make this like a red color. Because, well, it's killing someone. So violence I, I don't know so just to design the UI however you'd like to design it yeah I think this looks pretty good I'm going to change the text of this so we could see when we type in the username just test this out test looks pretty good well it doesn't look pleasing but it works I'm just gonna make it say kill Alright, so let's begin. So let's first make our remote. So in replicated storage, let's hit the plus and let's insert a remote event. Let's just rename this remote to kill player. This might not be that safe because an exploiter could run this remote, but we can still use it this way since, well, we're pro you'll probably end up using this as an admin panel or some game pass so it would be harder to actually get that to exploit but if someone figures out what this is you could just rename it to like i usually rename things to codes like key plr so no one understands it uh, uh, it's just a suggestion so in service script service let's hit the plus and insert a script let's just name this kill player remote or actually, let's rename this script to kill player, and let's rename this to kill player remote, the remote. So we can remove our print hello world, and we're going to type local remote equals game dot replicate storage dot kill player remote. So this makes a variable called remote, and we're going to store the location or the directory of the kill player remote, remote inside of our game. So now let's do remote dot on server event connect function so when this remote is fired it's going to do anything in between these lines so we're going to add a few parameters the first parameter we should do is player this is just going to get the player who the remote is like firing from you could say or just players in general then what we can do is player player user name this we could just or we will explain that when we go over here so this should be everything we need so we could just do game get service players wait for child player username dot character dot humanoid dot health equals zero so this gets a service called players that's in the game. This waits for a child and we're going to pass whatever the player username variable is. So let's say we name this my username. Then it's going to wait for somebody named my, well, my username instead of the player's service. And we're going to get the player's character. The player's humanoid which contains all their like human stats. And then the humanoid's health and set it to zero which is death or dead so that's our basic remote done now we can head over into our kill button hit the plus and insert a local script 
we can just name this fire remote now inside of our text we can just remove this and we can do local remote it's game dot replicate store that kill player remote so since we already attached a function to when this remote is fired we can just fire it straight from here but we're gonna have to add a few parameters to it so we're gonna get the directory of the kill player remote and store it in a variable now let's do script dot parent dot mouse button one clicked connect function so when the script's parent is pressed, which the parent of the script is whatever it's inside of, which is the kill button. And then whenever someone presses on it with their mouse button 1, which is the left mouse button, it's going to be connected to a function and it'll fire whatever's inside or between these lines and before this end. So we can do remote fire server. Now, we're not done yet. Before this, we're going to do local player to kill you could change this up to player to kill with the actual word to and we're just going to do actually let's do local plr to kill since that's the name of our text box equals script dot parents dot parents dot player to kill so we're getting our text box and we're going through the script's parent which is the kill and then the parent of the parent which is the frame and then the player to kill text box and then we're just going to do player to kill dot text. So pretty much whatever the text is. So let's say we go to our player to kill box. Let's say we type in well, my username. Whatever this is. When we click this kill button. It's going to fire the remote with the text of the text box. Which is whatever username you type in. And it's going to fire that remote. And pretty much this is like replacing everything that says player username over here in our server script with whatever this text is because we're passing it and sending it into the server and we're using remotes because if we do this like all on a local script then it won't exactly work for everyone because a server script applies the effects to everybody in the server now that doesn't mean it's going to kill everyone in the server, it's just going to mean it's going to visually change everything for everyone in the server. Whereas a local script, if we kill someone on the local s uh, with a local script, it might appear to, th to us that they're dead, like they're in the dead Roblox state and their health is zero, but they're actually going to be alive and able to move. We just won't be able to see that because we killed them locally. In other words, we killed them on our client. So a local script only changes and affects stuff on the client. That's why we're using remotes. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to get rid of my username from there. Let's just head over here. Let's check output. Output's a good way to find errors. So let's just type in ABC. Now nothing should happen there because we don't have anyone named ABC. So let's try typing in my username. As you can see, I've died because I typed in my username and hit kill. Now let me just, as you can see, if I don't type it fully and I hit kill, nothing happens and this up here is saying infinite yield possible on players wait for child abc this pretty much means it doesn't exist so whenever you see an infinite yield on a wait for child or any of that sort it just means that it could not find or that thing does just not exist so once again if i type my username in again and hit kill i die if i type in someone else's username it'll kill them instead so yeah hope this video helped you and hopefully you enjoyed and yeah see ya